thing to note about the rods when they're assembled. You'll see where I'm pointing with the screwdriver here on the number three rod. There's a little triangle or bump here. The number four rod has it on the opposite side. So the evens point, these bumps point back, the odds, the bumps point forward. That tells you you've got them assembled correctly. Before installing the oil pan, be sure along your rubber piece here at each end and all the way along the edge, inside edge, of your gasket for the oil pan that you put a light bead of right stuff. I found if you don't do this, because things are probably bent, not perfect for so many years, that the standard gasket won't be enough to seal everything up well. Just so you know, before I push it all the way down, both sides of that head gasket have copper anti-seize on. That's what you're seeing for a copper color here. And the rubber mallet works just fine. We're using a cast iron head here, not the aluminum head that these supercharged engines had in the first place because by this point in life, those aluminum heads are actually a problem. They're very porous and usually somewhat failing. Prefer to use the cast iron heads. And there it is on. Next step is we're going to put all the hardened washers and nuts on here, and then we'll go to torquing the head. Now each one of the studs up here needs to have a hardened washer, and you have to have the gram tall nut put on. So I'll have to go through and do every one of those, and I'll have you watch that. That's kind of going to be long and tedious. When I get them all on, we'll show you how to torque the head. Now we're going to start torquing the head down. You start with the center stud. Now we're doing an initial setting of 25 pounds. reason for the 25 is you really should do a three-step job when you're torquing down a head. So we're going to do 25 on our first, 35 on our second, and 44, which is the final setting on the fourth. So you see I'm working my way towards the front. Now we're going to go back, and we're going to work our way towards the back, still on that center row. You can find this information in the Graham shop manual. Also, you might find it in various other old manuals that cover multiple makes. Now, you could go either way from now on, but you want to work the same way from the center to the front and then center to the back. Now we're back and we're going to do our second round of torquing, going to 35 pounds. Start in the center, move forward first. Then go back and move to the rear. And again, you can work either side, but always start in the center. Work towards the end. Now we're going to set and do our last torquing to 44. We're going to do the whole thing here, showing the order. Final time. Now 
flip sides. Always working in and out. torqued head. Now we're going to install our drive for our distributor. <clears throat> I'll put a little bit of oil down inside of here. And because as you notice it has the fork section, there's a blade on your oil pump. Get it down in there, line it up, all done. Have the distributor placed on the top of the engine here. It only goes in one way because of this stud and the way the body is shaped. It can only go on here one way, so your nameplate's going to face essentially forward on the engine. On the bottom, there's a blade that's going to fit into the drive for the distributor that came up off the oil pump. Put it down there, fit it in place, make sure you're definitely in it. You can wiggle back and forth, make sure you are, and you can fasten it down with the two 7 sixteenths nuts and lock washers here. What should end up happening, provided you've set the timing like I have, where we are set for coming up on top dead center on our number one cylinder on the compression stroke, I put a little red dot down inside of the vibration dampener on the front so that I could see that we're either at the right space or 180 out. In this case, we've checked because we've Move the engine forward and felt that we've got compression just to make sure we were right about everything. So we set our distributor up this way. Basically, you're going to be pointing at you and you're going to be able to check that with your distributor cap. This being the spark plug wire holder, this is the side that goes out or towards me. This is the inside. All the welds go towards the inside of the, of the engine. So if you're on the passenger side of the car, there are no welds showing, so I can tell this is the outside. This therefore is the number one cylinder wire. And when we put this on here, you know, you have a piece that is molded into it that will fit into this indent. You put it in place and it locks down in there. Then you can see where your number one spark plug wire is going. And the number one spark plug wire is right here on my side in the center, and that's exactly where the rotor is pointing. So we've got it timed out correctly this way. Fairly easy way to do that. Looking down into the distributor, you want to make sure that you set your point gap properly. On your distributor drive here, you have a series of lobes, essentially a hexagon shaped item down here. You want to get on, get your little rubbing block, there's a little plastic rubbing block. You want to get that on the top of the lobe. When it's on the top of the lobe, your gap right here where I'm pointing with the car with the uh, screwdriver should be 18 thousandths. Now in the event you have to set it and widen it out or narrow it up, you're going to loosen this screw and then you're going to turn this screw because this screw acts as an eccentric and will change the opening over here and be sure you measure and set that correctly once you get 18 thousandths when it's on the top of the lobe then you're going to tighten it back up right here and that's going to give you the proper gap for getting the proper spark in the engine now we're going to put on our supercharger crossover tube this particular gasket we make here make laser cut copies if you need one and you want to install it with Aviation Permatex. I've also got Aviation Permatex on this side of this crossover tube. Now at the moment, I am not going to fasten this down permanently. I am just going to start the bolts because we have other parts that we have to put in and we have to have things be able to move around for the time being. So we don't actually want to fasten it up tight. And you'll see what I mean as we put the other pieces on. So right now, all I'm going to do is just start the bolts. Nothing more. The outside two bolts have to be longer than the inside two bolts. That will become apparent when we put a bracket in here that we'll do later.
Next step is to start your water tube here. This is one of the reasons we don't want to fasten this in entirely to start with. We got to get the water tube in here. And of course, being metal, it's not really going to bend like a rubber hose, obviously. You can bend it, but it's a lot more work. And it's got to fit between these two points. So you want to get that started in here now. And at this point, you can actually fasten the supercharger crossover tube down. You'll later have to remove the two bolts on the outside to put in the air cleaner bracket and put them back. But for now, you can actually fasten it all down. On the driver's side of the engine, the next thing we're going to do is hang the supercharger. We make a laser cut gasket for this, so if you need one, you can order it. What you want to do with the gasket here is put aviation permatex right around that opening and around that bolt area. So just this area here, both sides. You can put it on the supercharger if you want to, and not just put it on the gasket, but it's easiest to put it here and here. So that when you put the supercharger up against here, we're going to seal this section off completely. That's what we want to do is make sure that's sealed. This is your oil return from the supercharger back into the oil pan. Before we put on the supercharger, we've done our gasket down below, got that ready, but we've also got to put our crossover tube O-ring retainer on, so we get that here. We've also got our O-ring. This is one that's been used, but it's in great shape. This is a Viton O-ring. It is made from 3 8 inch thick Viton, and it's actually glued together with Loctite 404. That's the only way you're going to get an O-ring that will hold up the gasoline and actually fit. You have to make your own. So we'll put the O-ring in here. What matters is the inner portion of the O-ring. That's why this little rip on the side won't matter. That's the outer portion. That doesn't have anything to do with the seal. It's the inner portion. So we've got that in place for when we put on our supercharger. We're going to put the supercharger in here. The nice thing is we've got two little bolts to hang it on. Actually studs. At this point, the first thing we did was fasten our supercharger to the block followed by fastening our crossover tube to our seal here. Lastly, fastening this tube. You go in that order, things will fit real nicely. Now right here, we have one bolt missing. We have a stud. That's for our supercharger to head support. That's this device. Looks like this. Has a little plate here, two bolts, and a block. We're going to set that in there. And we're going to put a lock washer and nut underneath here and get them started. All we're going to do is start them because we have to actually put the bolt through the supercharger into the block before we tighten that up. So now we're going to take the extra long bolt here, put it through this hole in the supercharger and try to get it threaded into our block and started. And what you want to do is you want to tighten up this bolt before you tighten up any of the rest of this support. So next we'll actually tighten that bolt. We'll tighten up our upper bolt and I try to keep this assembly straight in line with the engine while you're doing that by just holding onto it with your other hand. Once it's nice and snug there then you can tighten up your other bolts on the side and on the bottom last. One last item to note about that support I've seen a couple people run these engines without them. It's not a good idea. What ends up happening, since that supercharger tower is so tall and the stress you end up putting on it, you actually can crack the supercharger tower. So you really need to have this support in to hold the supercharger. Just remember this. Cars, automobiles are built on the bird theory, cheap, cheap, cheap. That part wouldn't be there if the grand engineers didn't think it was necessary. And it's very necessary. Now you can install your rear water tube. It goes into the supercharger from the head. What Graham is doing here, of course, is preheating everything. And then eventually, of course, when it's been run for a while, keeping everything at a constant temperature. Once you get these nice and started, and you grab your 7 8 wrench, which you would have used on the other tube, 
and you tighten these up thoroughly. You may also notice here I'm not running the stock carburetor. This is a Carter ball and ball carburetor. It was actually done for Chrysler. Works just fine on this engine. And I've already plumbed it in. The original carburetors, they say that they're a marvel if they work. Well, actually they can be made to work, but you have to know where to add an O-ring to make them work properly since the Zamac casting inside deforms over time. So a Carter ball and ball works real nice if you can get a hold of one of those. All right, we put our vacuum advance line in place. It's got a little clip it's gonna fasten down with our spark plug wire holder. One end goes to this portion of the advance, the other end goes to that portion of the carburetor. Take a little 3 8 inch wrench and snug them up. If you need to make a line like this, parts are available from Steiner Tractor online. They will not tell you they're for Graham cars, but you can actually get the parts. They sell the right thing to buy. Now we're ready for our spark plug wire holder. Remember you have your little portion that has to fit in that spot on your distributor. Put it in place. Fasten your distributor on. And your spark plug wire holder is going to go right there. And I'm going to grab my hardware. I'm going to put that through. And the holder for the vacuum line is on the back side of the mount on the crossover tube. And we're just going to start this on here and we'll tighten that up off camera. Now, as I told you previously, the wires are all in order. So number one is right there. Number two, feed it through, put it in place. Number three, the same will be true of the back three. However, I must tell you, putting that one in is really, really hard because my hand is way too big, but eventually I get it in there, you'll probably have the same problem putting it in. We got number six over here. And number five. And as I said, now I'm going to have to weasel number four in there to finish mounting that, and then I'll tighten this all up. One of the last steps you've got of actually getting the engine assembly together is to reattach your supercharger drive. Now I've got both rubber pieces in here. I'm going to have to pry this just a little bit to get this back across for these. You also have two rubber pieces that go on the back side that you'll put in too. But because I'll be right in front of the camera, I'm going to pry it over off camera. Okay, having got that pried into place, now we're going to insert our two special bolts. These are sort of a short head bolt grilled on the one end. I want to get them to insert through here. Now when you're inserting it through, you also want to remember you got to put your rubber coupling piece on the opposite side and hold that and get it in. Do the same thing with the other one on top. And it takes a little futzing around to get everything to line up. And I know this is putting my arm right in front of it. But once you wiggle everything just right, you'll get it in there. And we'll be back in a moment when I get that all done. To finish up here, now I've got both of them slid in. We're going to move one back far enough so we can get a washer in here. We'll put the washer on. And then we have to get our castle nut and put on there also. So one castle nut and gradually tighten that up. Obviously all you're trying to do is get this thing nice and snug. You're not trying to smash it flat. And once it's snug, make sure you're lined up on your hole with your castle nut and you're gonna put a cotter pin in there and fold the ends of your cotter pin over. I'm not gonna bore you with that. I'm gonna go through and do all four of these now. You can do this job in the car, but it's far easier obviously when I've got it outside of the vehicle to complete it than it is to do it in the car. One thing to note again, this is your output line. Normally it would plumb directly to the front of the supercharger. I plumb this always to an oil cooler which I place hidden under the 
apron right down below the radiator so that I'm always feeding into the supercharger the coldest oil I can feed. Here's your oil filler tube. It just sits in here. If you look at the gram literature, it should go about like that because you want your breather over here on the side like this. But really that's just sitting there and can be moved around. Also, your dipstick just slides in right there. We just never did that before, so that's done. And the last item that you actually have is your breather that goes into your valve cover. You just slide it up in the tube, fasten it at the bottom of the oil pan, and you're all done. That's all you can really do with the engine on an engine stand. Everything else is going to need to be done either with it on a hoist to start assembling the bell housing, etc., or actually once you get in the car. Here we are looking at the back of the engine after it's off the engine stand. This particular plate that's in here is your mounting plate you're going to attach the entire bell housing to the engine with. There are only three bolts that hold it on and the starter side goes to the driver's side of the car, assuming we're talking about an American version of a car. Graham also made foreign versions, which would be driving on the wrong side, and the starter would then be on the passenger side. This is American version. Here we have our flywheel. Flywheel will only go on the crankshaft in one specific way. The reason for that being, if it didn't go on in one specific way, you couldn't use the ignition timing marks on the front of the flywheel to actually time the engine. So, although they look like they're in a circle, these particular bolts we put in previously in the crankshaft are not a perfect circle as far as distance in degrees between the various bolts. That being said, you really want to mark your crankshaft and your flywheel so that if you take them apart, you know how to put them back together. In this case, the crankshaft in this engine was changed out. Crankshaft that had been in the engine was 40 thousandths under its maximum amount that you can grind it down to. So we switched. This is a different crankshaft that's only been ground 10 thousandths. Now the 40 thousandths under crankshaft could have, for example, been hard chromed and brought back up, could have been welded and brought back up, but because we had another crankshaft to substitute, we did. That being said, though, again, we do not have a marking. We actually have markings that I previously put on here, and there's three little dots right here. The three little dots are off to the side. I'm going to put three little dots in here in a little bit so that we would know this matches up with this and would easily find how to put it back on if we had to. It's quite a bit trial and error until you find that position because these are almost in this perfect circle with degrees between them being identical, but not quite. So it's best to mark them. Next thing we are doing here is going to tighten up the six special nuts here. I use an impact gun on those and tighten them all the way. I've chased all the threads on those nuts before I do that. And now I'm going to tighten those off camera so that they are fastened down. Now something else to know. The next step is going to be to put the clutch back on here and the clutch housing assembly. You'll notice I've got two marks here, I've got three marks, and I've got one mark. Here's the three marks over on this side, for example. So I have marked that as well as the clutch housing. The reason being the clutch housing was balanced with this unit previously, so we want to put it back exactly the same way. And when I put that back, I'll kind of show you how I do that. Looking at the back of the flywheel now that it's installed, here we have part of a Graham transmission, kind of got a worn out snout. So I saved this one for the purpose of being able to line things up. We're going to use it to line up our clutch in just a moment here. This is the clutch that goes in this car. The snout goes towards the engine, flat side out, snout towards the engine. So you can set it up on there like that and then you can put that there and all of a sudden you got everything lined up just like you want it to because you're actually using the real part. It's far easier than trying to do this without an alignment tool. 
Nowadays, you know, in modern cars, they often give people plastic ones to put this together. Well, we don't have a plastic one, but we do have an alignment tool that works. Now, when you go to install the actual clutch assembly, it's been balanced with the flywheel. And so what's been done here is that there are marks where it goes. Right here, I have a two, for example. Here's a three, and there's a one down on the bottom. On the clutch itself, if you can see it, for example, there's three little dots right here by this bolt. Over here, here's a one. And then on the other side, here's the two. So you put it back just the way it's stamped so that everything will stay in balance. And all you have to do is put it back up there and actually fasten up the uh, bolts that you've got. And you'll notice you can't put it past here, so we do have to have this past this point to actually put it in then we'll be able to pull that out once it's all assembled and i'll do that off camera and put it together because you'll see exactly how to do it two to two three to three one to one this will be so we can actually pull it out when we do the real assembly next up on the install is the bell housing utilize these top two bolts to bolt it in place initially then you're going to be able to start going around and putting in the other bolts as you notice, we keep adding stuff to the engine, it keeps tipping back, but ultimately we actually have to have it tip back to put it in the car, so I'm not sure I'll adjust that chain. I might later on adjust it for position. Put your flywheel cover on down here before putting on the side braces. You want to do that because the side braces, sometimes, depending on the engine, will end up being just over the edge of that flywheel cover, and then you won't be able to deal with it without undoing stuff. So always go flywheel cover, then the side braces. Last thing, of course, you can put your starter on here. And now you've got everything all the way back to the point of putting on your transmission. And you basically completed the job.